This is number 15 and bittersweetly our final session on the altar perhaps will give some of his Torah in coming weeks but in terms of his uh, biograph biographical uh, view and trying to understand his educational methods and how he was so much slich, we gave many many individual examples and I think it's a very appropriate way to end this um, series which for me has been wonderful, I hope you've liked it, is to understand something about him, a tremendous amount of sablonus. Sablonus means like patience, tach sivlis mitzrayim is the burden, to carry the burden of things. We often in our lives want things to work well from the beginning, on the outset, like our marriage should go well, our job should go well, our, our learning should go well, anything we're involved in, our hobbies, anything we're involved in, we want it to go well right on the spot. And in a certain way that limits us from so much goodness and greatness because a lot of things only happen the Rabbah Tazman and, and the continuation of Sinai and pushing forward. And the altar was the exact opposite of that, the um, diametric opposite. He put so much effort into things. He put so much savlanus and so much patience, and he dealt with things in such a, in a, in an incredible way. Where do we know this from? So you're quoted in, again in Maris Igdolim and Os Dalid, the Sab and Nevardic, the famed altar of Nevardic. Amar Alav Shu, listen to this. Have you ever heard this term before? Gaon b'savlanut. He was a genius in savlanus. He was a master of patience. And, in fact, it says, When people would praise him about how wise he was, how smart he was, how genius he was, and all the other ways, etc. He was very, very makbid. He was very against this, very specifically against it. Vomar. Don't think it was wisdom. If I built all this Talmidim, if Slobodka is a flag ship yeshiva, whatever I was zochet to build, it was lo nefesh. It was patience and serious nefesh, working hard, giving up my whole soul, as we said, his whole life was yeshiva, sablonus and serious nefesh. Which is really an amazing, uh, amazing message, and not such a, a no message about the altar. And if there's something people realize, how much savlanus he had, and um, you can only imagine when you think about how much was savlanus specifically. We didn't go so much into it, but the trying times that he lived in, the the koch of of, of Ascala, the the koch that Bnei Torah weren't nechshav in his time when he started to put them back on, on a level and to let them appreciate, like we said, if Godless saw them, covered all them, you're the pinnacle of of, of creation. And how much he had to carry the burden, the Sablan has been carrying the burden. And this is really one of the Midas of Hashem. It says, No se avon. Hashem is no se avon. He carries the avon. The Ramak explained in Tamar Dvar that every time Khalila Yid does a, an Aveira, it, it creates a spiritual uh, bad force. And as opposed to that spiritual bad force taking its sustenance from the person which would kill it, Hashem takes it on his back and carries it. And that's an amazing chesed of the Rabbanu Shalom that we create negative things, and in order to save us from being killed by those negative things, Hashem takes it on His back. You created it. You you created something which is against me. I should take care of it. That's the Sablanus of Hashem. That's Hashem is a cell. In fact, Hashem is called a Melech Haluv. He's called a, a Melech who's insulted, etc. How much patience the Ron Shalom has with the world. And we think about His educational methods, to, to think about the Talmudim so much, and to go into them. Rav Hutner, who we quoted a bunch of times in this context, Rav Hutner said once that, you know, reflecting on his time in Slovakia, the altar pushed me to the point, to the nth degree, I was almost ready to break or to leave Yeshiva. Right, and that shows the galus of Rav Hutner, but it shows the, the chachma for sure of the altar. They knew exactly how much to push and how much not to, but also I think shows the patience of the altar to, to work with the Talmud and to know exactly how much and to, to be so and keep trying. And because of that, we have a Pachad Yitzchak and the thousands of Talmidim um, of Rav Hutner. And this is a great parting message from us. There's, there's, there's nothing greater that we can do than build up our spouses, our children, our Talmidim. But it takes a tremendous amount of patience all the time. And, and the way the world is working, the way technology moves us to want things faster and faster. I watch myself sometimes. And we get you know things that five years ago would have been amazing at the speed that they happen. Now we get nervous and antsy. And we can't wait another second. And we're, we're so impatient. And we so want everything so fast away. And, and people are spending millions and millions and billions of dollars testing out how to make the technology work just a, a drop faster. Well, where's everybody rushing to? And what's it doing to our humanity? And what's it doing to our sense? But to work with people, to work with Chachma, it takes a tremendous amount of patience. That's maybe something we can learn from the altar. Another thing we can learn from the altar to, to, to work with that tremendous Sablonis.
uh, in all things, and especially in the amazing work of being Mamid, Talmidim, Mamid, our uh, our children and our Talmidim. <laughs>